John here guys and today is a very special episode it is the follow-up to the fusion build and in the original frame overview I showed you the cage version but here I have with me a pair of the potted versions and actually I have this one with the neon yellow color scheme in the nylon and this one over here in TPU now I'm not sure which of these two is actually going to go on sale eventually you can also see that I'm trying out brace um, in sort of a convex uh, manner here and in a concave manner here to see which one works the best now let's go through the builds. These are actually identical other than the pods and the brace orientation. I'm trying out a super duper ultra light build. This comes in about 265 ish grams with strap props, everything. Uh, and that's pretty impressive. Um, so for both of these, I'm using the Emacs mini Magnum 2.1 with MMCX connector. Uh, I am using the Runcam Nano 2 camera. That's right, the Nano. It comes with the adapter to run. This is actually a micro camera mount on this pod right here. I'm running the Hyperlite 2205.5. That's how I get the weight down so low. Uh, 1722 KV on the both of these. And I am running right here, the Neon Foxy Lollipop um, for this one, just to match with the Neon and uh, the Axi Stubby on this one right here. And these have run me very well. This one is actually unflown. I built it as a backup for me for the MultiGP qualifier, which I just ran recently. And uh, this one I actually did run a couple of times on the track. And wow, you know, these um, very inexpensive, very light motors make for an extremely light build um, with a lot of control and precision. Because of that lower power, you're not going to be probably beating anyone in the straightaways. But what you are going to be doing is <laughs> having a supreme amount of control. Now, after trying this experiment with these motors, I think I may go back up a size. Heaven, I haven't got the power. Try, man, try. Power, more power. Here's the reason why, guys. It's all about consistency. I've been very used to the 2207 version of this motor. And for the past five-ish months, I've been running the 2206.5, maybe even only four months. And so what ends up happening there is the 2206.5 and the 2207 very close in power and feel. Um, the 2207.5 I'm noticing is a little bit more power. So that's a little bit too much. This is a little bit less and it's just messing with my muscle memory. Um, I'm one of those pilots that I really have to kind of fly the same thing consistently to get results. And so uh, I think I'm going to go back to what I'm more familiar with. I really wish I could spend the time because I, I could tell in certain moves I was faster with this setup because of the more agile maneuvering. But in some of the instances where I need a little bit more power, it was costing me a few seconds. So rather than just totally adjust, I'll just go with what works. But if you're new and you want something that is very inexpensive to fly, I can highly recommend a setup like this. It's very similar to what they sold on the Floss 3 kit. Now this frame, believe it or not is on sale i believe it's with this pod i'm not sure if it comes with a spike or not but they're gonna have a price point of only 35 dollars i i believe that's right so if it's not i'll put it on the screen and that extremely low frame price allows you to have as many of these quads as you want um now traditionally a potted racer like this is normally in nylon like this one but nylon takes a little bit more difficulty to print, takes longer, and it's a little bit more expensive, and there's only a few places that you can get them. TPU is much easily, much more easily printed by other people. So because of this 
you can really have a very inexpensive but stout frame with some exceptional motor protection, with some exceptional camera protection, and with a very light turtle mode friendly option with the spike top. You can also go with the cage. I think the cage possibly adds a little bit more durability, um, but this adds a little more versatility. I personally like the look of the pod, but a lot of guys in town are running the cage version for that extra protection. Um, other notes about this build, I'm really liking the $15 on sale, $20 regular price Runcan Nano 2. I think I'm gonna switch all of my three to four inch and below to this camera. It, one note that I have is the 1.8 lens on this is a little bit wider than a 1.8 lens on almost any other um, camera. And so that made the image a little bit different from what my eyes were used to traveling at five inch speeds. Now I find that traveling a little bit slower doesn't kind of give you that disorientation. So it's not really as big of a deal on any other size quads. The image itself is quite nice, especially for that very, very inexpensive low price. So this is all in all a very economical build, especially with the low price of the frame. I'm always as a racer looking for a frame that is durable, that is race proven, that is inexpensive, that you can readily available um, get spares. And this is being sold at a few places now. And uh, I think that to get the potted version for right now, you actually go directly to Fusion Drones on their website. So you link in the description below for those guys there. Uh, Cristiano, great job on this. He's done it. He has done it. Mayday has finally figured out the solution to having a TPU printed race pod that can withstand a crash uh, and that is an extremely momentous and impressive occasion. Now, this is not the first racing frame to have a TPU pod, uh, not by a long shot. Uh, many will remember the Catalyst Machine Works America was probably one of the earliest designs that I remember having a TPU pod and I love that thing. I've had all the different versions, including the one pod designed by Mayday. My favorite person was the Razorback edition, but this is Mayday's latest creation with a very small insertable TPU fin on top. That allows you to have a dual color scheme right here. And I have this Hyperlite blue with a very nice Hyperlite orange. Oh, the color scheme matches perfectly. Um, so you can also do things like this. I got a couple of different options here. I am really happy uh, about how this frame goes together. The sandwich plates, the versatility of options. You can really change the look. I find that this design is so fun. It's so fantastic that you really just have to get out and try one. So here is some footage of me running this at some local events. And of course the 2019 G multi GP qualified and I didn't get my fastest times with this, but it's just because I'm not quite familiar with this setup. So I'm going to be putting some 2206.5 motors on here that I'm more familiar with. And I'm still deciding what's going to be my frame. I have so many great options to choose from, but uh, a lot of the Houston crew is now running this and I'm seeing more and more people in other states, uh, purchase these as well. So what a great design um, by Mayday. What a great collaboration with Fusion Drones. The Fusion Drone, I can't remember exactly what it's called, the official name of this potted version, but I'll put the name on the screen below. Here's the footage. Thanks guys.